Hi, this is David Olavsky, and welcome to the Rabbi Olavsky Show. And whether you are watching with our friends over at Turning Time, or wherever you watch or listen to your podcast, it's a thrill to have you along. And we have a sponsor for this week, Leilai Nishmas Shlomo Ben Avigdim Moshe and Malka Bas Moshe Fried and Yitzchak Yaakov and Rivka Grunberger, uh, behalf of the entire Mishpacha. One of the few things we are all willing to listen to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that. From Abigda and Mindy Free from Staten Island. Uh, I appreciate it very much. And uh, it's nice to have something that brings people together. <laughs> uh, I have had parents who have told me over the years that uh, when they go on trips and they have to put something on, you know, this one's fighting about this song or that song or this music. It says, very often we can all agree on listening to a Rabbi Olamsky tape. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you so much uh, for that. And it's wonderful to have you along. This is part two of a series that we're doing before the Yom Narayim. Because uh, there are people who are not going to be able to go to shul, even though they've gone many times during their life. And uh, they want to know how to make davening meaningful when you're davening by yourself. Um, terrible situation, but, you know, complaining about things is not what we Jewish people do. We solve problems. Now, you, can, you can look at things and say, well, to quote John F. Kennedy, who actually stole it from somebody else, some people look at the world the way it is and ask why. I look at the way the world could be and ask why not. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what we want to look at. We want to look at how do we make it as meaningful as we can. So um, we went over the structure of the tefillahs the last time. I, I want to focus on something else now, and I'm going to introduce it with a story. I was teaching in Ord David. Uh, and uh, it was, I was actually teaching tefillah. And I was, before Rosh Hashanah, going over the tefillahs for the Yom right. And I went over the structure of Mayrid like I did last time. And I said, you know, there's a, a particular niggin that, uh, that we sing during, um, during Mayrid, a particular niggin. Uh, I have heard that all communities sing this negative. I have heard there's a tradition that goes back to the base of Mikdash, which is why everybody knows the tune. I cannot confirm any of that. <laughs> but I was, of course, teaching it to the guys. There were people there who really didn't know the davening. And I started to sing what we sing before Baruch Hu. And everybody joined in. Baruch Hu, as Hashem Anyway, we were inside of the shul, and the acoustics were very powerful. And it was resounding. At the end, I was shaking. I, I was literally shaking. And uh, I said, okay, we'll stop here. And I went to the office, and one of the other rabbis looked at me and said, what's the matter? And I told him the story. He says, okay, that's what the, the Mata Moshe says. He says that the nigunim that we use on the Yom Nebrayim, the tunes themselves have the power to be Ma'ira as to Tshuva. I remember hearing many years ago that the Zoya Kaddish says that the Shari Nagina are next to the Shari Tshuva. That music has the power to change our life. It can be a life-changing experience. Bring us to Chuba, just the tune itself. 
I know this from my many years in NCSY. We're uh, saying I we'd have a kumzitz. There were certain songs that we would sing. They were very emotional. They used to move me. They used to move other people. So there was a story that they used to tell in NCSY. I don't know any of the details of it. I assume it's true. But there was this girl who came to a few NCSY Shabbatunim, and she didn't really know much. She dropped out. And at one point, you know, she got the news that her mother died. She didn't know anything about Jewish law, and I don't know, she didn't have access to a rabbi. So she sat down on the ground and took out her NCSY bencher and started singing the songs that she learned in NCSY. And that's the power. The power of these nagunim have the ability to be able to, um, to move us. Now, chaza over the music not just the words and the ideas, because the nigunim themselves have the power to be able to move us. Now, I brought an example of the Friday night, uh, excuse me. I brought an example of the Rosh Hashanah night nigun. Yeah, and it carries on throughout my riff. Yeah, oh, my it goes throughout. Um, some people slip in the chorus more often than others. But a lot of the Piyutim have their own particular niggin. Um, uh, Kriya Torah is, of course, to a particular tune. Um, it's always interesting on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, I'm a Kohen, so I get the first Aliyah. And you're supposed to make the bracha for your Aliyah to that nigan of the Kriya Torah. Baruch Hu Es Hashem HaMavayrach Baruch Hashem HaMavayrach so uh, I'm the first up to bat, so if I mess it up, it messes up everybody else. Yeah. So I got to make sure I get it down right. <laughs> but uh, there are certainly good name, right? Um, the sign of Tokev, which uh, we'll talk about more. Yeah. That was the tune that I grew up with. Um, A.B. Reidenberg has a beautiful one. Uh, when I used to dive in our David, the Chazan used to use that one. Rosh Hashanah Yika Sevun Uriyam Sain Kippa Yecha Semun Kam Yavon Vekama Yiboreyon Yichya a lot of different nigunim that people have towards that. Yeah? Um, uh, at the very, very end of Musaf Hayoyim, I grew up in a show where obviously the Chazan did not mind about repeating words. Hi, <laughs> 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 <
So there are different gunam that people use that becomes your tune. And it's an amazing thing. If they don't do the right tune, sometimes it takes away from your whole davening. I'll give you an example. When I was growing up back in my old shul, so uh, on Yom Kippur, so just before the al Khait is we Kiyanu Amecha Viata Elakeinu Hanu Vanecha Viata Vinu Ayayak Anu Tsainecha Viata Rewainu Okay. Now, they had a shtick. I don't know if there's a better word for it. <laughs> but when they did it by Mayrev, they did it very slowly. And it picked up by Shachris, went a little fast by Musaf. And by the time they were at Ne'ila, it was Kianu Amecha Viata Elogenu that always moved me on Yom Kippur, and it still does to this day. And I dive in and yon, especially here in Israel, they do other tunes. And I sing the old tune to myself. Because <laughs> that tune moves me. And that other tune doesn't. <laughs> I, obviously, part of it is how you grow up. Yeah. That's not really Ani It's Ani Mamin. But... That's how I grew up. And, and these things have a, a special place in your heart. So, when we chaza over the davening, it's good to note the tunes that, you, that move you. And if you don't have any tunes that move you, so get yourself uh, some recordings. I was going to say cassettes. I don't know if they still have those. CDs. I don't even know if they still have those. I'm sure you can find websites of it. Of different nigunim uh, for different piyutim that are popular. And, uh, and see which nigun speaks to you. Because not every tune, obviously the ones that you grew up with, that's going to have more of an impact on you, but Different people are going to relate to different things, right? Uh, I bought years ago the Karl Bach Rashi um, Kippur uh, uh, Nusuch. A lot of places in Eretz they do the Nusuch that Rosh Hashanah developed that they used to use in Chevron. Um, my father used to sing in the choir with the great Chazon back in Brownsville. And uh, certainly Gunim have have a tremendous meaning to him because that's what he grew up with. Yeah. But you have to listen to the tune. There's a very interesting thing. Somebody once asked Rav Hutna, a story that I had heard from, uh, from the person. He was trying to decide between two yeshivas and he wasn't sure which one to go to. And Rav Hutna said to him, go into the base medrash of each one and just sit and learn and see which feels right to you. Because the yeshiva is basically a tsinor, it's a pipe. And not everything attaches to every pipe. 
there's different uh, there's different threads and there's different widths. See where you feel you get more Torah from. It's a vehicle. It's a vehicle to get you there. So um, the same thing is certainly true with Nigunim. And as we mentioned, the Nigunim themselves have the power to be able to move you. So, uh, so figure out which Nigunim you should use. And plan it out like anything else. Um, I had this course last summer. Spend the Shabbos and... Uh, in um, uh, one of these vacation home uh, areas. And uh, it was uh, Shabbos Nachmo. And the Chazin did Lecha Dodi. And he did every single stanza to a different nigga. And I said, he's got to have that written down. <laughs> I kept looking over and I didn't see any petek. Because how could you remember that? So at the end of Davne, I went over to him. I said, how, how did you remember all that? And then he slipped over his sitter. He showed me the hand the list underneath the sitter. <laughs> he evidently was able to see it surreptitiously when I wasn't looking. So, uh, But um, um, it's a... Uh, I, I see Chazan and Rishul, they write down which niggin they're going to do to each part. Yeah? So, uh, so that's, a, that's, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah? Um, so you should know if there are certain nigunim that move you. Yeah? Certain nigunim I don't connect to. Sometimes they use those. Um, I mentioned back when I was in North David. So the first piyut that uh, we used to do in slichos, the first night of slichos, yeah, harina um, Yeah, um, he did an old vacas nigan um, to achashalti. I get goosebumps to this day whenever I hear that too. And certainly Slichas Night, I sing it to that tune. It has it has such power to me. Oh, <laughs> And uh, that tune still moves me. I mean, deeply. Every time I hear it, there's something haunting about it. Something, something mystical and magical, transformational. Now again, that's me. Yeah. Um, uh, there are. People like faster ones, slow ones. We do a thing at Rosh Hashanah during the day Suda, where me and the kids we go through the Machzer and we sing any song we can find. <speaking in Hebrew> Yeah, 
I find that one much more meaningful than that. Uh, yeah, can't leave, I can't leave, I can't leave, I can't and uh, like I say, uh, some people don't relate to these because uh, they're too old. They're looking for something more contemporary. The point being, which is the right nigan? There's no right nigan. You have to find the song in your heart that speaks to you and opens it up. So I definitely advise, it's very worthwhile between now and Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, to listen to the music. Right? The, the, the nigunim that, uh, that have that power of moving you. Yeah. They tell, uh, there's an old Hasidic story that the Rebbe used to take the Hasidim out into the woods and uh, he would uh, sing a special niggin, very mystical special words. And after a while, they, uh, they forgot the words, but they would go out into the place in the forest and they would sing the tune. And then after a while, they forgot where to go in the forest. And all they had left was the niggin. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's just that tune. I've been hearing years ago that nagain is Nun Gan. Nun is, of course, the 50th level. 50 always takes us out of this world. You count seven days, seven times, and then you come to Shuas, Har Sinai, where you move out of this world. You count seven years, seven times, then you come to Yoival, which takes you out of the normal functioning of the world. All these sort of things, yeah? Um, 50. So the 50th level that takes you to Gan Eden is a nigan, nagain. So that's one of the things you're going to have to do. Go through and mm -hmm. find which nigunim speak to you and where it goes. Because the more things that you sing, obviously, the easier it will be. Very interesting thing. Uh, there's uh, different phrases you find when they're doing a Mishnah or a Brisa. Sometimes they say, Hochi Aman. Um, which uh, means this is the way you should understand it or this is the way it should be written or whatever it is. Sometimes you find a, a line called chasuri mechsera. There's a line missing from this Mishnah of Raisa. How did they know? Because the beat was off. Because the entire Mishnah was set to music. Because something that's set to music is much easier to remember. And uh, therefore, the more things that we can sing, and that we can use the music to be able to move us, uh, that'll just make it more successful for us. And uh, like I say, I've sung some of the songs for you that are meaningful to me. Um, other people have other digunim uh, based on how they grew up or uh, what they had. Uh, there are certain ones that are pretty universal. Avinu Malkeinu Avinu Malkeinu Avinu Malkeinu Kien Banu Masim Aseimanu Stuck 
These are these are ones obviously that uh, uh, seem to have more of a universal appeal to it. Uh, I have found in almost every minute they use the same nigan for a shamnu. Right? When you say a by yourself, right? Right? When the tzibur does it, uh, it seems kind of strange. A little too upbeat. We have stolen and we've lied. And I beat your grandma. Hey, I, na, 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 right? But everything that we do in Yahadus obviously has has to make sense. Yeah, the Chazal say Yisrael Kedoshim Hey. Anything that Jews do, uh, you see a minute. The default assumption is that it makes sense. We don't we don't assume things don't make sense. Or as Ralph Weinberg said, we Jews have been accused of every possible crime throughout history, the one thing they've never said about us is that we're stupid. That they've never said. And, uh, you know, if, if we have a minute, there's a reason for it. And the reason is that's part of what's integral to Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, we are confident that the Kodesh Baruch is going to forgive us. Rosh Hashanah is not that way. Rosh Hashanah is Din. Rosh Hashanah is Yira. Yeah? Rosh Hashanah is Malchus. But Yom Kippur is one of the happiest days of the year. So therefore, we're, we're saying uh, the Hashamnu with a, with a confidence. We know Kodesh Baruch is going to forgive us. So anytime you find a tune, there's got to be a reason for that tune. There's a reason that we're doing what we're doing. But like I say, some of these things are universal, like a you know, Rosh Hashanah night. Yeah. The little introduction over there. Again, I find that to be usually consistent. The um, the filler, which you probably don't have to use when you're when you're diving by yourself, but uh, every now and then you give Bechaz a little chance to catch his breath. Some places go further. So some of these are, like I mentioned, somewhat universal in nature. But uh, like I say, I can't, I can't advise you. I can tell you what's meaningful to me, but that doesn't mean it's going to be meaningful to you. And uh, I... Like I say, I, what I thought was wonderful in our David is that they used as many contemporary nigunim as possible and tried to sing as much as they can. Um, uh, there's uh, a tune for, for the capital Din, which unfortunately a lot of people stretch out. <clears throat> I say unfortunately because I'm I'm a big believer in keeping things moving, even if even if what you're saying is very important. So that's for you. That's not for the chazan. The chazan doesn't have to do chazonas over there, in my opinion, unless you enjoy chazonas, right? Then by all means. But guys. <laughs> There are places where they stretch that out terribly. And uh, the capital din itself is so heavy already. Do you have to make it heavier? 
like I say, that's that's my approach. My approach is that if you're going to do it, and as I always say, the shtila shmona esrei, that you're going to say by yourself, to yourself, take as much time as you want. That's not a problem. But the piyutim, the chazar shots, and these things should try to move along in a way that uh, keeps it moving, keeps it flowing. So that's it. That's your assignment until next time, is to listen to some Yom Narayim uh, Nigunim and see which ones speak to your neshama, which one lights you up and has, uh, has meaning for you. And uh, jot it down. Chazer it over. Make yourself a mix and listen to it so that the nigunim move inside of you and then you can access them when you need them. Okay, that's it for now, part two of our Young Narayim Tefillah series. If you want to find out more about this uh, uh, show, you can go to rabbiolowski.com. You can leave comments. You can uh, leave a, a message, ask questions, uh, sponsor an episode. And uh, that's it for now. I'll see you at the next episode, part three. For now, I'm David Olavsky, and this is The Rabbi Olavsky Show. It's The Rabbi Olavsky Show. Torah and Simcha, ready to go. The Rabbi Olavsky Show. Knowledge and wisdom will help you grow. Lots of fun in every episode. And we don't have to rhyme, no, we don't. It's the Rabbi Orlovsky Show on RabbiOrlovsky.com. Torah, anytime, YouTube, and more. It's the Rabbi Orlovsky Show. Torah and Simba, ready to go. It's the Rabbi Orlovsky Show. Till next time, till we meet again. It's the Rabbi Orlovsky Show. It's the Rabbi Orlovsky Show. It's the Rabbi Orlovsky Show.